Amen. Amen. Are we there? Amen. Amen. All right. So what was I saying? <laughs> it's all about love. And we use as our prime example, Jesus Christ. He loved us so much that he gave. And we know, as I said in Galatians 5 and 6, the latter part of that verse, it tells us that faith works by love. And so again, we have to believe in, we have to trust in, we have to acknowledge who God is and our love for him, knowing that it will carry us through every situation and every circumstance. There's another passage of scripture that says, let love be without dissimulation. And what is that saying? Be real, be genuine. Don't be phony with your love. You know, a lot of people do lip service. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Dagger in their head, I love you, I really do love you. <laughs> so we want our love to be genuine because the blood that was shed for our salvation, it wasn't a generic substitute. It was the real deal. So it's all about love. I thought about Miss Tina Turner, everybody knows her? <laughs> and what's her famous song, what love got to do with it? <laughs> what does love got to do with it? That's what she asked us. Well, I tell you, Miss Tina, it has everything to do with it. <laughs> it has everything to do with it. It has everything to do with it. So we're gonna take a look in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, a familiar passage of scripture. And it reminds us of the importance of love. We're going to start at verse 1, read down to the first part of the A portion of verse 8. Are we there? Verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. What is that saying to us? If all we're doing is making a whole lot of noise, but we're not real or genuine or have love in our hearts, it's just like an empty wagon making a whole lot of noise. So again, this shows us, this is the love chapter. It stresses to us the importance of love. So I can speak in tongues, I can speak so eloquently, I can do all of these things. But if there's no love in what I do, then I may as well have kept silent. Verse two says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So again, this humbles us and it shows us, you know, sometimes we get a little um, beside ourselves, you know, smarter than the average bear. We look at all of our giftings, all of our talents, all of our abilities, and we start getting puffed up. But this tells you that if you understand all the mysteries of the world, you can explain it all. But if you don't have love, you have nothing. You have nothing. Our faith must work by love. Without the love, it's all in vain. Verse number three goes on to say, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Some people like to do a whole lot of work. And we know that we should be doing works. God saved us. Christ gave his life for us that we would do good works. But if you're doing the good work so that someone will call your name. And so so-and-so sold $1,000, $10,000. They built the new wing on the chapel. You're doing all those great things. But if your motive is wrong and it's not based out of a genuine love, it profits you absolutely nothing. 
Verse number four tells us about love. Love suffers long and is kind. This is time again for that introspection, that self-examination, looking at our love. What kind of love do we have? It suffers long. That means if you really love, you're willing to endure. You'll put up with some things. Just think about it. <laughs> Somebody's putting up with your stuff. And the reason they haven't walked out the door, why? Is because of love. So when all of these thoughts, thoughts start going through your mind and, oh, they get on my last nerve and they're always doing this, and da, 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 you know, you're just running down the laundry list of how bad it is. Remember, love suffers long. Some things you endure because we recognize none of us are perfect. We're all works in progress. And what you think is getting on your last nerve, just take a look at yourself. What do you do to get on other people's last nerve? But yet they keep putting up with you. And then love is kind. Just be nice to people. Don't be evil. Don't be angry. Don't be nasty. Don't be all of those negative adjectives that we could think of. Just be kind. Sometimes just a smile. And even when someone has chewed you up one side and down the other and you feel like coming back at it, you're just like, you know what? A soft answer turns away wrath. I'm just going to be kind. I'll suck it up. Amen? Love does not envy mm, that green-eyed monster that makes you want what someone else has. Oh, I wish I was so-and-so. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Whatever state you find yourself in, be content. And as Pastor reminded us, content doesn't mean complacent. But I'm satisfied where I am now at this phase of my life. I don't have to envy someone else. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. No show off, no show off. And we've all seen show offs. <laughs> That's not love. Verse five, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own is not provoked, thinks no evil. Now remember, weeks ago we talked about we control what we think about. And those evil thoughts, they come. But we have the power, we have the ability, we have the authority to cast down those imaginations because we know we want to work by love. Verse 6 says, does not rejoice in iniquity but instead rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And we end, and it says in verse 8, the first portion, love never fails. Love never fails. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love, 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 pure, genuine love. It will cause us to succeed. Verse 13, if we can scroll down quickly, verse 13. And now abide, what? Faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Amen? We magnify you. You are my God. I will, I will let you. Come on, everybody, with your voices. I will. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. I will let you. You are mine. You are my God. Come on, everybody, say I will. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my 
my God. I will exalt you. God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. You are my God. You are my God. Come on, one more time, real loud. I will. I will exalt you. God, I give you praise. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. You are my God. Come on and give Him praise. Amen. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. You are my Praise God. that wonderful name of Jesus. Well, in the book of James this morning, James chapter 2, I'm going to begin at verse 14. I'll read down possibly to verse uh, 20-ish, somewhere around there and um, 1920, and we want you to see today and, and go along with us in the subject that we've been talking about, and that is uh, how this thing works. Everybody say, how this thing works. And so uh, this morning we're talking about faith without works is dead, and we need to know that without incorporating our works with our faith, then we're doing absolutely nothing. We need to know not only how to believe God, not only how to trust God, but how to act upon what we believe. And so in James chapter 2, it says this, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says? What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says? Y'all get this? What does it profit, my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? You got to get that right there. It already explained. A lot of people talking to talk, but they ain't walking to walk. And it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to do it. He said he has faith. He does not have faith without works. Can faith save him? He said if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to him, one of you what? See, he's naked. And he needs food, but you talking to talk. You say to him, what do they say? Come on, read. What do they say? Come on, what do they say? Depart in peace, be warmed and be filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? In other words, can you get it this way? If God was just saying a whole lot of things, if this book is not real and God has promised and doesn't fulfill his promise, what good is that to you? Anybody believe today all the promises of God are yes and amen? amen. Y'all ought to say it like it's, it's yes and amen. And Kings, it says none of his promises has ever failed. In the Matthews and other gospels said that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not. Amen. Come on, in Isaiah 40, it says people are like grass and flowers. They fade, but the word doesn't. And so, in other words, if God was just saying to you, you healed, but you never experienced the manifestation, what good is that? Amen. If God was just saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit, but you never would feel with evidence of speaking in other tongues, what good is that? Because a lot of people say, I'm filled with the Spirit, but you can't pray in the Spirit if you're not filled with the Spirit. Amen. So it said, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So if you ask him for it, the demonstration is he gives it to you and you have the ability to speak in other tongues. And therefore, it says, he that prayeth in unknown tongues speaks to God. So he's given us the ability. He didn't just promise. Amen. 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 Y'all getting this? Amen. He says, depart to him and be filled, but you do not give him the things that are need. Verse 17 says, thus also faith by itself. Faith what? By itself. Faith what? By itself. Faith by itself. If it does not have work, it is dead. Faith how? By itself. So you got to understand, faith stands by itself, but by itself is no good. So you, 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 you got to rightly divide. Faith is over here, and so we have faith. Faith stands what? By itself. So faith is my confidence in God and his word that whatever God promised is going to what? Come to pass. Faith is substance. Faith is evidence of things what? Not seen. The Bible says in Hebrews, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of faith. So faith by it. Faith by it. 
So in uh, what is it? Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible. to do what? Please, it's impossible to please God. You got to first what? Believe that God is, and He is a rewarder of them that. So you got to first believe God is, he exists, and then you got to believe he's a rewarder of everybody that's seeking after him. So I got to seek his face, am I not right? And he shall be found. And so faith by itself is dead without works. So go on to verse 18, verse 18, and continue reading. But someone will say, someone will do what? Someone will do what? Say you have faith, and I have works. He says, show me your faith, show me your what? Faith. Faith. And what happens after that? Without your, because we're going to look at works over here, faith over here. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my words. He says in verse 19, somebody say, this is good. He said, you believe that there's one God. How many believe there's one God? I said, how many believe there's one God? I said, how many believe there's one God? And see, the whole difference between those that get into devilish things, they believe only in one God, but don't believe God gave his son. And so in John chapter 2, 1 John says, he that had the father had the what? Son also. So you got to take it a step further. Somebody say, I got to take it a step further. And not only do I believe, Romans says, if I believe in my heart and do what? Confess. Y'all believe the word? Come on, confess with my mouth, then I shall be. So, so can believing alone save me? So I believe there's one God. It says here, uh, uh, you believe there's one God, you do well. Even demons believe and they tremble. So you believe there's one God, believing is over here. Faith by itself. What is faith? Believing God. Conviction, confidence in God and his word. That whatever God promised is going to come to pass. Does anybody believe that? So faith stands by. But faith without works, what is it? What is it? Faith without works is dead. So work is business. Somebody say business. business. Work is employment. Somebody say employment. employment. Come on. Work is an act or deed. Somebody say act or, act or deed. So when we're talking about works, works is over here. Faith by itself is dead because I need to incorporate my works with it. Amen. Are y'all with me? I'm going to demonstrate something in a minute so maybe some of you can see it visually and you can understand that I got to do something. And I can have all the faith in the world. I can be over here believing God till Jesus come. How many believe God till Jesus come? The devil believes. He believed everything God promised. He was there when God created heaven and earth. God created him. He's been in the presence of the Lord. So demons tremble at the name of Jesus. See, that's why I'm asking you all the time to open your mouth. The reason we open our mouth, we're not putting any action with our faith. So if I believe in my heart and I confess, because when confession is made unto righteousness, and a man heart, he with a man heart he believes. But I gotta do something. Somebody gotta hear me say it. Amen. People walk up to you, are you a believer? You love God? You believe you're going to heaven? I'm trying my best until you start confessing who you are in Christ. Until you start saying out of your mouth, see, your body don't feel good, but you got to say out of your mouth, I'm the healed of the Lord. Your money doesn't look good, or may, matter of fact, it's not even existing. Are y'all following? You got to say, I believe all my need is met. Amen. Your family may be corrupt and, and confused and, and, and disillusioned and going different direction. But if you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16, he that believe on the Lord, he and his whole house. That's what the jailer said. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your whole house. So even though your family looks like it's in a disrupt, you got to say out of your mouth, except the Lord build the house. Then you got to start acting that way. Do I have any believers in the house? And so just to say you believe God, devils believe. Somebody say devils believe. And they tremble. So that's why you ought to put the name of Jesus on every demon that's affecting your life. I got three amens. You sit here and let stuff happen. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that what? They'll cast out devils. That's what it says in Mark 16. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You got to do something. 
Don't just say I'm sick. Come on. If nobody there to lay hands on you, lay hands on yourself. Do I have believers in here? Well, that looks silly. I'm in the house laying hands on myself. I need the preacher. No, that looks like faith and work. That looks like I'm taking authority. That looks like I'm saying I'm not going to accept this thing. Amen. Yeah, I remember people would come to church and get excited. And, uh, uh, sometimes preachers would have them bring their bills and they would throw them down and jump on top of them and, 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 and cast the devil out of them and believe the bills are paid. But how many know when you leave here and put them back in your pocket and you don't go home and pay the bills, then you don't have works with your faith? Are y'all hearing me? There need to be evidence. There need to be things coming to fruition. You need to see the mighty hand of God. Does anybody want to see the mighty hand of God? Yeah. All right, let's finish reading before I move on further. I've explained to you faith is our conviction, confidence, and belief. Faith is our what? Conviction, confidence, and belief. And then work is an act or deed. Amen? Business. Something that we're doing. So faith by itself. What is faith? And, and without? What is it? Faith without is what? So you believe, the devil believe, and he trembles. Verse 20 said, but do, you, but do you want to know, oh foolish man? What does it call us? Foolish. It's foolishness when we don't operate in faith and we don't put something with it. That faith without works is dead. He says in verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by his? He was justified by his? When he offered Isaac his son. Go back over to Genesis real quick. Genesis chapter uh, 22, if you would, Genesis chapter 22, and let's look at that, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate this for you, as I said before, but I want you to get the understanding biblically. The faith without works is dead. Abraham didn't just believe God, but Romans 4 said he believed God. Romans 3 says he believed God. In James, it even says Abraham believed God. In, in Galatians, we are of uh, faith, those that are blessed with faith for Abraham. Am I not right? So we got to understand Abraham didn't just believe God. He had to act on something. And I want to tell you this. Even in Abraham believing God, he had doubt. How many have been challenged with doubt and fear? And unbelief. Come on, real people in here. I said real people in here. You've been challenged with doubt, fear, and unbelief. And do you know when doubt, fear, and unbelief takes a, a charge and it's in authority is when you don't do anything. Just because you're afraid don't mean you stand still. God has not given me. Come on, the spirit of fear. It didn't say I won't have fear, but God didn't give it to me. He gave me power, love, and a what? So as long as I have the ability to do, I got to act on it. You didn't get that. See, we quote scriptures, but we're not incorporated. He gave me what? Power. He gave me the ability to do it. Love. Faith work is by. And then I'm not crazy. He gave me a sound mind. Shout about it real loud. So just because faith uh, or fear uh, comes your way and you encounter fear and doubt, Abraham had doubt. He asked God, where's my son? I have people in my house, but I have nothing of my own bowels. Sarah doesn't have a child. Where is my child? Where is the promise? And God goes and tells him, go look. Somebody say, go look. Go look. See, first of all, you got to have a vision of faith and you have to have a spirit of faith. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching louder than y'all responding. See, faith is the substance of things. What? Hope for and the evidence of things. So when Abraham didn't have a son, go look at the sand. Go look at the stars. Other words, you got to get an image in your mind what God is getting ready to do. You got to get an image in your heart that God is going to do what he promised. Where there is no vision, people perish. And because we walk by faith, that means God gives us vision. He gives us a hope in the future. How many believe in God for the future? Yeah. How many hadn't seen the future yet? You know, I got to look past where I am. You got to look past where you are. See, I see some big things. Anybody today? I, I see God doing something big. And it ain't just something big. It's what he promised. Not one title of his word can fail. So I got to hold on. So how do I get a vision? How do I get a glimpse? I look into the perfect law of liberty. I look in the word of God and I see if he done it for David, he'll do it for me. If he did it for Daniel, he'll do it for me. If he did it for Isaiah, he'll do it for me. If he did it for Paul, Peter, James, he'll do it for me. Is there anybody believe that today? 
And when your faith is failing you, you got to open up this book and get a vision. And let me tell you, just because you got a vision don't mean everybody's going to accept it. Sometimes your own brothers will slay you. That's what happened to Joseph. He had a dream, and he messed around and told it. And he wasn't telling it. Most of you misunderstand him to be braggadocious. He was telling it because he believed it. He was telling it because God showed it to him. And he figured, I don't know how this thing going to come to pass, but if God shows their sheaves bowing down to me, their wheat bowing down to me, my brethren bowing down to me, my father bowing down to me, yes, it seems arrogant, yes, it seems out of touch, but do you believe the vision God has given you? Amen. And even when his brother sold him into slavery and left him for dead, he never lost sight. So he went into slavery with this conviction. God promised. Anybody believe God promised? And you know what I love about reading about Joseph? Not through one, not one of his adversities did he complain. Some of you say you believe God, he gave you a vision, but as soon as other people start putting their mouths and their hands on you, you start complaining. Lord, it's too much. You don't remember, Paul? I prayed three times. God says, so what? My grace is sufficient. Yes, you've been in a shipwreck, but did you drown? Yes, you were beaten, but did you die? Yes, you were put in prison, but you came out. Yes, you was hungry, but I fed you. Yes, you were naked, but I clothed you. Don't tell me about your adversity. Tell me and praise God because you believe God. Anybody going to hold on to your vision? Lord is not short, his arms short, his ears heavy that he can't hear. He's waiting on us to stand fast. We quit soon as whether everybody's saying, well, nobody's coming. Well, people won't do. Well, pe no, no, no. You don't have nothing to do with my faith. I got enough faith in here. I may not like it, but I'll preach to empty chairs. And this ain't the first time I've done it. I've done it before. So if all of you disappear, I, I, I keep telling myself, I preach in empty chairs. When I first called the ministry, I would go to the church several times during the week, especially on Sunday. And I would open that empty church, and I would preach. Amen. I preach better sermons when nobody was listening. Are y'all hearing me? Because, see, I'm not preaching. You got to put faith out there. I was a young man, 20 in ministry, uh, Wednesday night, upstate New York, Syracuse. It snowed. We had church still. My father was like me, or I was like him. And that's where I found my faith. So it didn't care if it was snow. Everybody went to work when it snowed. They went to school when it snowed. Not in Georgia, because our faith is weak in Georgia. Y'all just see a little powder, and you roll over. I ain't going to work today. It snowed. Man, we were walking in seven inches, 12. I mean, it wasn't nothing. The plows got up early. If they were out there early, they plowed the streets. Not even the sidewalk. You remember, y'all New York folk, uh, they plowed the streets and the sidewalks. You, if you walked on them, you had to lift. Matter of fact, we get exercise. I, and then you had to reach it wide while you... Because you couldn't get in the street. Sometimes we walked in the street, but cars would be slipping around and sliding around, and they couldn't stop. Uh, and so if you had a crowd of children walking in the street going to school, it's a possibility they would hit us. So we, the first group that leave home would make the trail. Are y'all hearing me? So those that went early, and so when you came out, you didn't start a new trail. You just got in the trail where everybody had walked. And the more people that walked that way, are y'all hearing me, the more the snow was packed down. And, and then you had a path, and by the time you came home, you still had another way home. We couldn't get up in the morning and say it's snowing. We didn't have that luxury. Now, they would close it if it snowed and the temperature dropped below zero because they didn't want us to be cold and frozen. Now, y'all following me? But cold was all right. People ask me now, and when my wife, I didn't own jeans. Why you don't wear jeans? See, I was from up north, and jeans, when you walked in the snow, they would freeze. And it was like walking in cardboard. And I couldn't stand the feeling. Sometimes the snow would be so high up to your hips. It was an awkward way. And then you go in the house, you can hit your jeans. Y'all remember they were still frozen? But see, if you wore corduroy or other material, 
that snow wouldn't stick. Well, y'all with Abraham? Y'all with Abraham? Sometimes snow will stick to everything. All right, look at verse 1. Now it came to pass. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. God did what? And he said to Abraham, uh, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Then he said to him, take your what? Take now your? Why is he saying now? Because you already had Ishmael. And that wasn't my perfect will. That was permissive will. And now you have a son of Sarah, old age. So that's why he said now you waited 25 years. Are you following me? You're 100 years old. Now that you have him, will you give it up? How many is willing to give whatever you have to to the Lord? I had three amens. That's probably where we are. And that's why a lot of you don't see the hand of God in your life because you're not really to to let go. You think what God bless you with is your all in all. Some of us worship our children. We worship our car. We worship our house. We worship our job. And so when God intervenes and disrupts our life, a lot of times we can't go forward because all those things he blessed us with are so precious. How many said this about people when they die? I don't know what I'm going to do and I can't live. What were you doing before they were alive? And if they were born before you and they happened to be your parents, why do you think they birthed you? They didn't birth you to die when they died. They birthed you to carry on something. That's a lack of faith when you're talking. The Bible said we ought to sorrow, but not sorrow if it's somebody that don't have no hope. How many still have hope? You sit here allow depression and death. If you believe God, you believe I'm going to see him at the latter day. Anybody believe that? So he said, take your only son, now your son, the one you have now, the one I bless you with now. Your only son, Isaac, whom you love. And you know if you read the scripture, that's not his only son. Because Ishmael was born before Isaac. But let me tell you all something. When things are not done in the perfect will of God, We're trying to make God bless our mess. One earlier passage of scripture, Abraham said, I don't have anybody but Ishmael uh, uh, except Ishmael. And the Bible said, and God said no. How many know God says no to your plans? I wish I had a couple of y'all that knew those scriptures. Because we know all the promises of God is yes. But when God didn't promise and you made it up. That's why y'all got to be careful of all this false prophecy. Everybody can hold a hand on one ear and say, yay, yay, yay. Thus saith the Lord. You don't live by prophecy. You live by faith. Listen to me. My faith is not in individuals. I'm not waiting for somebody to come along. Some of y'all wait for some word to come along. That's why somebody strange to come along and tell you what you're thinking. You know why they can tell you what you're thinking? Because all they're doing is listening to what you put in the atmosphere. The devil believed God. So when you're out just putting everything out, putting everything out, the devil knows what you desire. Man, I wish I had a man. I wish God, I, I'm just so tired of being single. Then not any old man come along. jack leg man, three-legged man, you don't care. All you want is a man. I read a story the other day. A woman married a man. They said he was filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in other tongues, was in the church, loved the church, was involved in the church, and she finally married him. Two years because she prayed for her husband. On her wedding night, he slapped her. Nights after that, he beat her almost to death. One particular, that's a true story. He beat her so bad one time he killed her and resuscitated her again to beat her some more. They showed the picture of her all bruised all in the hospital. She almost died. Lost control of body fluids. I beat her till she couldn't stand. This man was in the church. Y'all quiet. Because faith without work, all you do is yabba dabba. You see him speaking in tongues. He spoke in tongues. He da te te hande ma 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 your car. Some of y'all don't even know true tongues. Everybody that's saying honda three times, are y'all following it? Mama te 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 ha la la. It ain't God. 
let y'all get so spiritual. You're a word of faith. You're non-denominational. You're Holy Ghost filled. So any jack leg, the devil transformed himself into an angel of light. Some of you men, the same way. You just, I need a woman. I don't care what kind of woman. And so you get a woman, she's she in the church, and all of a sudden, look how many women have talked their men out of the church. Y'all can look around here. A lot of the men are missing because they're wives. And I'm going to tell you something. I was just thinking about that sitting down there. Uh, uh, when God called Abraham to leave his father and mother, guess what? He didn't say nothing to Sarah. Right. Women got to have enough faith in God and marry the right person you believe that hears from God and then be willing, come on, to submit yourself. Submit is a voluntary thing. Y'all quiet on me, women. That's voluntary, to yield, withdraw, and retire. See, God will keep you if you trust him. See, I don't know what the woman that got beat put all the confidence. We fall so in love with the image of a man. Titus said a man ought to first prove these things. You got to spend some time with him. You might have to investigate his credit report. And some of you women hear me, and, and sometimes you go out there and meet to me, I need to see your credit report. You better be willing to show yours, too. Don't be going out there trying to look at somebody's credit report, and your whole report say 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Y'all know what a 9 is, right? But you want to talk about, do he have a car? Do he have a house? What kind of job? How much money you got saved up? What's your future plan? Some of you women, women out there interview. Do you know how you interview a man? You live it yourself. Amen. We try to be so deep in the church. Faith without your own works. So that's when that man go home and he go crazy. You ought to left him on the wedding night. He slapped you. Are y'all following me? I married somebody years ago. They told me in council they didn't want to get married. After I explained to them all the importance and details of marriage, they were shacking up. And they said, well, I really don't want to marry. Only reason I'm married because I'm shacking up. <laughs> and so he told her after the council session, I don't want to marry you. They got upset. They uh, uh, went and looking for him, <laughs> brought the brothers, fathers, <laughs> and they had a conversation with that young man. Next, I know, he said, well, Pastor, I'm going to go ahead and get married. <laughs> Faith without work. I'm just telling you. And, and, and so they, they got at the wedding, he almost passed out. I, I, I'm asking him, do you take, and he fell backwards. They had to catch him. <laughs> we had to go downstairs and get a wet towel. They wiped his face, so I started over. Do you take? He very, very, I mean... I can only hear, barely. <laughs> now I asked her, do you take, yes, yes, yes. She wanted to be married. Matter of fact, she was upset with me when he changed his mind, knocked on my door and came and told me, Pastor, you messed up my wedding. I done bought my dress, I done, all this counseling, and you done messed up my wedding. I said, honey, it's best he changed his mind now Amen. then later. Well, long story short, they got married, finished the ceremony. He went through the ceremony, barely breathed. I barely said I do. Matter of fact, I stood there. I was like, well, I'm going to get an I do out of you. You either do or you don't. And I waited. I, they went and got a towel. They wiped his face. I should have just said, stop this mess. That brother got married, went to the reception, cut cake, exchanged, took pictures, took her home and said, let me go get some stuff from my mother's house. And he ain't never been back <laughs> since. Some of y'all wild, but that's how some of you are. You want marriage over. That's why a lot of people ain't bringing their, their, their spouses or their fiancés to me for counsel. A lot of them hear that stuff because she don't really want the real truth. What does it say? Faith uh, worketh by love. See, if a person really loves you, they can overlook whatever flaws. But if you got a list already up front, all the things I don't like, you best walk away now. Don't be that desperate for a one-night stand. Or don't shack up for convenience. Sometimes all that brother won is the rent paid. 
Amen? Amen. Paid and laid. That's all he's looking for. Are y'all following me? Anybody can receive that? If you stop doing either one of those, are y'all following? He out of there. I got to move on. Sometimes, brother, that's all that sister wants. They come with a list of interviews. What you making? What's your job? What's your credit like? See, they hear this stuff taught. Because it's taught, they go and pro. That's why a lot of people are single. You approaching men with a list. And they like, how dare you? I don't want you. Are you following? Because if I don't meet three of those qualifications, this is not real. What kind of car you drive? How long you been on the job? And you ain't been on the job but three times in your lifetime. <laughs> Are you... <laughs> <laughs> are y'all receiving this? And that's why a lot of single women in the church are, are single, because you got too many high standards. Amen. Then you got to work at a certain place, hold a certain credentials. You can marry a good janitor, and he'll be the best man you ever had in your life. He could be an auto mechanic. His hands may be dirty, but they paying the bills. You don't just look for uh, 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 what's in front of and behind his name. Those people can be psycho and get you home, you hanging from the ceiling, and they beating you like a pinata. <laughs> but they have titles. Are you here? I've seen medical doctors kill their family. You're putting on the front. It's time that you not only believe God, but you got to put your actions. Yeah. How dare you interview? I walk off from any woman that walk up me with a list. I'll cast the devil out of you and your weave. Are you following? <laughs> oh, praise God, I'm married. And a lot of times you don't know what you're getting. Everything's tucked and, and puffed up, made up, weaved up. Sometimes you got it this early, man. You got to say, can I grab it? <laughs> if they panic, oh, no, don't you. <laughs> Let me get back to this lesson. because See, I had to get you all involved some kind of way. We're saying a lot, but there's nothing behind the talk. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. Join us online every week at 7.30 p.m. for a word from God through Pastor Anderson. Be sure to comment and let us know you're watching. Stay connected. Download our app to have everything covenant right at your fingertips. Stay updated with events, messages, and pertinent information concerning the ministry. Like us on Facebook. Watch messages on YouTube and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CCM Marietta. Also, visit our website, covenantchristianministries.org. This Sunday, service will be at Smitha Middle School. That's 2025 Powder Springs Road, Marietta, Georgia, 30064. There are four easy ways to give to Covenant Christian Ministries. You can give online by following the link in the video description. You can also give using the CCM mobile app. If you have a PayPal account, you can give directly from the PayPal app using the friend and family option. You can also go to paypal.me forward slash covenant Christian men. Lastly, you can always give during the service or by mail at P.O. Box 4065 Marietta, Georgia, 30061. Your support makes ministry happen. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great week.